What's up guys, my name is Brad. Thank you all very much for tuning into another video. I appreciate each and every one of your views, so thank you for that. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to properly back purge stainless steel tube. This will also translate over to schedule pipe with a tool made by a guy named Brad Harmer. His company is called TIG Aesthetics, and it's a silicone purge plug with an internal mesh diffuser that works absolutely amazing on all forms of tube and pipe when it comes to stainless steel. So one of the most important things you can do when you're back purging stainless steel tube is making sure that you're actually filling the tube with argon correctly. Now, for example, I just shot this video of me filling this tube up with water. Now the blue water is gonna represent your argon and these little tiny foam particles in the top are gonna represent oxygen and atmosphere that is trapped inside of your tube. So the best way that you can fill your stainless steel tube up with argon is from the bottom up. Make sure that your tube is cocked at a slight angle, your argon hose is coming in from the bottom, and you just purge all the atmosphere out, and then after you're done with that, you can move the tube around and you can do what you want with it. But as you can see in this video, when I poured the water into the tube, that was kind of simulating me filling it with argon from the top. You're gonna to just have water pouring down that tube halfway, and it's just gonna be a turbulent mess of argon in there, and it's not gonna fully take up the volume of the cylinder. Now I know in the video I poured in from the top, and that was just to represent this filling with water as it pushed all of this foam or atmosphere out of the way, and it would have just popped it right out of your vent hole on your other purge plug. And then now your tube is completely filled with argon, there's zero atmosphere in the tube, and your weld will be very clean on the backside, there will be zero carbide precipitation. But when you get into some high-end manufacturing, whether that's aerospace or nuclear or anything like that, quality back purges are a big thing. Now, if you pull your plug in an aerospace environment like that sometimes, you have to redo the part. So what's happening when you're fitting up an automotive fab part like an exhaust or a downpipe or something like that, is if your joints aren't perfectly tight and they're not taped off, the positive pressure from the argon pushing its way out of those joints is actually going to introduce atmosphere inside of the tube. So do you think having a little bit of color in your tube after all that is going to be the end all and it's gonna destroy your part? No. You can have golds, you can have purples, you can have all types of color in the tube. It's not necessarily negatively going to affect the structure of the alloy until you start getting into some bad purges that are super hot that cause carbide precipitation. Now what is carbide precipitation? Carbide precipitation basically is when chrome and carbon in stainless alloys react to atmosphere at a specific temperature range. So, it's not necessarily negatively going to affect anything if your purge isn't absolutely perfect. It just depends on the industry, the requirements, what testing it's gonna go through. So don't always be discouraged when you pull your plug and it's not perfectly silver every time. Now you guys are gonna need a couple of things to get started. You might already have them, you may not. Now if you have two different bottles and you don't weld off of a doer like most production welding facilities do, you're gonna need two different flow meters on each bottle. You can use one bottle to back purge, one bottle goes into the back of your machine to give you shielding gas through your torch. Now if you only have one bottle or you are welding off of a doer of argon, you can use a, something called a dual flow meter. That'll basically allow you to plug it into your bottle and then you'll have two outlets with two flow meters that'll allow you to change your gas flow rate depending on whether it's going to your machine or whether it's going to your back purge. Now there's a lot of guys that get by with just using aluminum foil and half for a long time and that's just what they're used to. I don't think it's the absolute best method unless you're a veteran with it because you can know exactly what you need to crunch up, how you're gonna fit it to make sure there's no leaks. Unless you have a purge monitor so you can actually read parts per million inside of the tube per oxygen to argon, then it's kind of a guessing game and I don't like to really guess or waste a bunch of material on a bad purge, so I just invest in the right tools and make it happen with what I have. All right guys, we're at the weld bench. Basically I cut up two pieces, some 304 stainless steel tube. We're gonna do one coupon with a purge, one without. I'm gonna show you what carbide precipitation looks like and what a good purge looks like. I also kind of want to explain to you CFH per part size, as well as what leaky joints can do if they cross blow through the joint out the side and basically remove your argon coverage on the outside of the part from your cup because your purge is too high or your joint is just leaking and blowing out your argon. So this is what we got going on. Some people will argue that you absolutely have to back purge your tacks. On stainless steel, I do not just because I do not get full penetration on the inside of the tube. 
they're just tacks, so there is no carbide precipitation on the inside. Just little tiny tacks placed every inch or so, utilizing shrinkage to close these gaps. If you tack here and tack here and tack here, and you have a little gap over here, then you can add a little bit of filler, go a little hot, and then when that weld shrinks, in most cases, if it's not too bad, you'll be able to pull that joint together. So the number one biggest tip that I have for anybody when they're fitting up stainless tube and they wanna have a good pack purge is to make sure that you're grinding all of the faces of all of your tube joints nice and flush on a belt grinder so when they fit together, even if it's pie, everything is perfectly sealed. There is no oblong or crooked edge that creates a gap on this assembly. So basically now that we have our two pieces of material tacked together, Everything is nice and clean, acetone wiped down, no fingerprints, no grease. We're going to use one of these purge plugs here. That is going to be inserted into one side and will feed from whichever side. You can see the diffuser in there. It's a silicone plug so it's a very nice tight seal. There are no leaks and as long as our joint is fit up well, there's no leaks there. And then we'll use a purge plug on the other side as a vent. Now what you need to do is you always need to have a vent because if you don't have a vent, pressure will build up inside of your tube and then it will find a vent somewhere along your joint and it will blow a big hole out. Now when it comes to CFH flow versus part size, on something this small, I probably flow 5, 7 CFH just to make sure that it's doing well since it only has one joint. I don't have any leaking to worry about. But if this was a big pie cut section, a down pipe, an exhaust, something like that, I'd probably crank it up 15, 20, just depends CFH wise. You might have to go pretty high sometimes to make sure there's ad adequate pressure coming out of this hole so you know you purge the entire tube assembly free of atmosphere, free of oxygen, no contaminants inside, just an inert environment. Now something that can happen when you are welding stainless joints and they are back purged that you need to take into consideration, if you have any overlapping joints on your part or you have any leaks or anything to where your argon can actually shoot sideways, when you're welding along, if you have a joint here and then you have a joint here and you're welding this joint and you have argon stream just jetting across, it can blow your argon coverage completely out to where it'll gray completely out or ruin the part or whatever else. So just make sure that when your part is purged and you have the flow that you want on your part that you kind of feel with your face or your tongue or anything like that to make sure there's not an excessive jet stream of argon shooting out anywhere because it will mess your entire weld up. So when I refer to an alloy as reactive, Anything reactive, whether it's stainless steel, titanium, mild steel, um, Hastelloy, Inconel, anything like that, that's all reactive alloys. Those all react to atmosphere when exposed to atmosphere or oxygen in a certain temperature range. Now when we're talking about aluminum, aluminum is non-reactive. A lot of people have asked me, how long does a good purge take? Well. If you're using good plugs that aren't leaking and none of your joints are leaking, depending on the size of your assembly, a good purge can take anywhere from 15 seconds to 60 seconds to purge the entire inside of the part of atmosphere. If you're sitting there and letting your purge run for 10 to 15 minutes and thinking that it's still doing something, then you're wasting argon. Make sure you have no leaks, good purge plugs, and if you do both of those things, 15 seconds to 60 seconds to purge most things. Now what happens when your purge is too high? Well, if your purge is too high and your vent on your other purge plug isn't actually releasing enough argon, you'll develop positive pressure inside of the tube assembly and it will actually push your weld up to where your penetration is no longer convex, it's almost concave where it's trying to push it back through to the outside of the tube. And one more thing that I wanna make sure that I do mention is if you don't have the best fit up, and your joints are leaking, you can use powder coating tape to seal those joints up. Typically powder coating tape doesn't melt till around 400, 450 degrees depending on the grade. So you can actually keep that really close to your weld while you're closing up a joint and then you can pull it off and then tape the next joint. So keep that in mind when you're welding with bad joints that are leaking. And like I was talking about, we'll just keep our parts slightly angled feed from the bottom, all the argon will push atmosphere out of this purge plug vent, 
And then all atmosphere will be purged out of this assembly and we can go ahead and weld this. Good flow. It's been two months since I've welded anything, so I apologize. So when you're welding a non-back purge part compared to welding a back purge part, it's night and day. A non-back purge part, you're gonna be constantly pulling contaminants from the backside of that into the puddle. It's just a very irregular, choppy, non-smooth puddle. Your toes are wiggly all over the place. And then you jump to a part that is back purged and you're having adequate coverage on the backside of your weld. Everything's very smooth. Your toes aren't shaking all over the place. There is no contaminants, no little sparks popping out of the puddle. It's a big difference. There's a lot of people in the industry that are selling parts online for cars that aren't back purged. And the problem with that is when you have chromium carbide precipitation, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make that joint very brittle. So when you have turbo manifolds and stuff like that that are constantly breaking and eating cracks because they're a $300 manifold on eBay, that is exactly why. Now that I have both of these coupons welded up, we have one that's not back purged, one that is back purged. This is some 16 gauge or some 0 0.0625, three inch diameter, 304 stainless steel tube. All right guys, so there we go. We welded two coupons, one with a purge, one without a purge, both 0625 wall, three inch, 304 stainless steel tube from the exact same manufacturer. As you can see here, here is what chromium carbide precipitation looks like on the inside of the tube when you have no argon coverage and that temperature is getting up there and it's reacting to atmosphere. Looks pretty rough, looks very sugared. That term goes back and forth. I just say carbide precipitation, some people say sugared. And basically what's happening is the whole structure of the stainless steel has changed. It is now no longer corrosion resistant and it's prone to cracking. It's basically just junk. And that's how a lot of things out there look. Nobody's actually taking the time to back purge production parts that are manufactured and sold for a low amount of money. Now here's a purge part. It's not the absolute best, but it is gold, nice and clean, perfectly acceptable, 120% acceptable. You can see where the penetration has came all the way through, even on the restarts and tie-ins. It's not absolutely perfect like it would be if you did it on a positioner, but I'm super happy with it. I appreciate all of you for watching along. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like the content and you wanna see more on a diverse range of different topics, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for joining in and we'll catch you on the next video.